Denise Ryan here again with our 92nd mnemonic in internal medicine and our second in rheumatology. I greet you in the awesome name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this beautiful rainy Tuesday morning. Today our topic is steronegative spondyloarthropathies. The mnemonic is PEAR and then clinical features of the spas is BEADS. But first as always please allow me to favor you with a few dad jokes about the spine. So, do you guys remember the joke I posted about my spine? It was about a week back. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you call an Egyptian who adjusts spines for a living? You call him a chiropractor. <laughs> and last one, guys. What's it called when your backpack messes up your spine? You call it scoliosis. <laughs> okay everybody so you know this is passion week and it culminates in um the easter weekend good friday and easter sunday so i thought i could encourage you with a few scriptures about the cross and the crucifixion and the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ the book of first peter 2 24 says he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we may die to sin and live for righteousness by his wounds you are healed the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of, um, of the throne of God. Amen. All right, guys, so let's just talk today about steronegative spondyl arthropathies. So this is always included in the differential of oligoarthritis. And we'll talk about this in a different video, right? But um, the different um, clinical uh, entities that encompass the serenegative spondyl arthropathies include P for psoriatic arthritis, E for enteropathic arthritis, A for ankylosing spondylitis, and R for reactive arthritis, right? And um, the uh, clinical features of the spondyloarthropathies include backache, right, enthesopathy, arthritis, dactylitis, and spinal involvement, all to varying degrees. Okay, and they all share in common uh, the HLA B27 uh, genotype, right? But we'll talk about that just now. So, cardinal features of the spondyloarthropathies include the distribution in that it has a male preponderance, especially younger males between the age of 20 and 40. The spondyloarthropathy itself speaks to spondylitis, sacroiliitis, and morning stiffness, classically of more than 30 minutes. Also, we have oligoarthritis, which tends to be asymmetric, usually involving the hands and below the waist. And the enthesopathy speaks to inflammation at the sites of insertion of ligaments, tendons, joint capsule, and fascia to bone, with both destruction and new bone formation. This then results in Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, tenosynovitis, and dactylitis, or so-called sausage fingers. Of course, in the serology, all of them are HLA B27 positive and rheumatoid factor negative. Okay, um, distinguishing features between various uh, seronegative spondyloarthropathies is that with psoriatic arthritis, usually the situation is that you have a history of psoriasis with a predominant uh, distal interphalangeal uh, joint involvement. With enteropathic arthritis, there's usually a history of inflammatory bowel disease. With ankylosing spondylitis, there's back involvement and marked ankylosis, speaking to stiffness. And in reactive arthritis, as a history of urethritis, cervicitis, or diarrhea, and eye involvement. And then the undifferentiated does not really fit any of the above. Okay, how will you investigate someone in who you suspect a prospective seronegative spondyloarthropathy? So your basics have to do with your labs. So your full blood count with differential, urea, electrolytes, ESR, and CRP, urinalysis, and rheumatoid factor. And this will obviously be negative in patients with spas. Imaging, x-rays of the affected joints, especially lumbar, sacral spine, and peripheral joints. Then special investigations, your infectious workup, okay, because this constitutes a differential for oligoarthritis. So HIV serology, if... Uh, you suspect reactive arthritis, good to do HIV serology. Chlamydia, PCR, if you suspect reactive arthritis. Stool culture, if you suspect reactive arthritis as well. Then the HLA B27 uh, has an association with the seronegative spondyl arthropathies, most commonly ankylosing spondylitis, right? Then, of course, if there's a joint effusion, you want to do arthrocentesis and send off a cell count with differential culture and gram stain and crystals. 
Okay, so guys, just in terms of examination of the back, the, the, the principles are inspection, range of motion, palpation, special tests, and looking for any extra articular changes. So an inspection of the back, we basically looking for swelling or erythema, atrophy, scars, and loss of thoracic kyphosis, and cervical or lumbar lordosis, right? Then looking at range of motion, so you want to check the gait and flexion of the spine, extension, lateral bending and rotation, palpation for tenderness over the spinous processes and the sacroiliac joints. Special test is the first up is a modified Schober's test, but basically you place a mark five centimeters below and 10 centimeters above the spine at the level of the posterior superior iliac spine or L5 level with the patient standing and a distance increase of less than 5 centimeters between the marks with the patient bending forward suggests limited lumbar flexion. You can also do the finger to floor distance to occiput to wall distance to perform the Faber test which is flexion, abduction and external rotation and that's a test for sacroiliac joint stability and straight leg, uh, straight leg raising test which tests for sciatica. Extra articular changes to look out for among your spas. Right? There's a whole lot of them. You look for nail pitting, onycholysis, psoriasis, tenosynovitis, dactylitis, synovitis, acute uveitis, aortic regurgitation, apical pulmonary fibrosis, tin to chest distance, occiput to wall distance, decreased chest expansion, cauda equina compression, and enthesitis. And then we have costochondritis, spatella, and Achilles tendonitis, and plantar fasciitis. Also, you want to assess for external tests or manifestations of inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, in terms of diagnostics, the European Spondyloarthropathy, Sp Spondyloarthropathy Study Group criteria is that you've got to have one of inflammatory spinal pain or synovitis, which is asymmetric or predominantly involving the lower limbs, plus one of a positive family history, psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease, urethritis, cervicitis, or acute diarrhea within a month prior to arthritis, which speaks to Reiter's syndrome, which is reactive arthritis, and alternating buttock pain, enthesopathy, and sacroiliitis. Management wise, guys, we go with symptom control versus treating the underlying cause. So, symptom control in the way of uh, physiotherapy, non steroidals, glucocorticoid injections, and treating the underlying cause. And the options we have in our arsenal include sulfasalazine, methotrexate, permidinate, and anti TNF agents, as well as surgery. But we'll be talking about the therapeutics in another video. So, there you have it, guys. Seronegative, seronegative spondylarthropathies, pair, and the clinical features, beads. God bless you.